Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of kings and Lord of lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, I trust this finds you feeling bright and blessed today, full of the Spirit of God and in love with Jesus. Now, we're continuing our study in the Red Letter series, and today we are in Matthew chapter 18 and verse 23. Now, if you'll recall, in our last time together, we discussed church discipline. And at the end of Jesus' instructions about church discipline, Peter asked the question, how many times shall I forgive him, this person who is offended? And Jesus says, not seven times, Peter, but 70 times seven. And so allow me to illustrate, says Jesus. And so he continues this thought in verse 23 when he says, Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, which owed him 10,000 talents. Now a talent, we are told, is 5,760,000 U.S. dollars. And so if you were to times that, times 10,000, that would be over $50 billion. And so here is one who owes the king over $50 billion. Now, of course, this is an extreme example, but Jesus is trying to make a point. He continues in verse 25. He says, but for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. And so the servant, realizing that he is at the absolute mercy of the king, having no way in several lifetimes to be able to pay this back, and considering his love for his wife and his children, he falls down. He begins to worship his king, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all, as if he could. And he would have been more right to say, simply have mercy on me, for my debt is beyond what I can pay. And isn't that an example of when we finally fully surrender to the Lord? When we bring all the debt, all the baggage, all the sin that we've committed through a lifetime, and it brings us to such a place of desperation, knowing that there is nothing we can do to make up for all of that, and yet Jesus so freely offers his forgiveness, wiping the debt clean? Well, that's what we see in this example. The Lord of that servant in verse 27 was moved with compassion. And so he loosed him and forgave him the debt. Friends, that's what Jesus did for us. He didn't demand that we spend a lifetime in obligation of debt unto him. But in one moment of time, he forgave us and wiped the debt clean. But now notice what this servant does beginning at verse 28. That same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence. This wouldn't even be a day's wage, friend. And he laid hands on him. He took him by the throat, saying, pay me all that you owe. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, have patience with me and I will pay thee all, which he surely can do. And so the debt of this servant is tremendously less than what his debt was unto his king. And yet he's absolutely unmerciful in the way he treats this man. It says in verse 30, he would not forgive him, but he went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry. And they came and told their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, his king, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt because thou desirest me. Thou pled with me for mercy. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? In other words, Jesus is saying here, let him who is without sin cast the first stone. Don't be so quick to judge others because you were just as guilty, if not more guilty, than they are. There are many things that we can see in this story, friend. We can see selfishness. 
When this man's head was on the chopping block, mercy was all that he desired. But when it came to his neighbor being in such a great place of need, he only thought of himself. We can see self-righteousness. His debt being so great, surely he deserved mercy. But when it came to the debt of another owed unto him, even as small and insignificant as it was, no mercy was to be given. He thought high of himself, but little of others. We can see in this story the need and the ease at which we point the fingers at others, yet overlooking the flaws that lie within us. And this is what Jesus meant in Matthew chapter 7 when he says, Judge not, lest you be judged. Cast the log out of your own eye before you look at the splinter in another's eye. And it's very easy to do, friends. Just last night, I was watching an episode of Hawaii Five O, Dog the Bounty Hunter, which I've never watched an episode of his shows ever, but I know that he claims to be a follower of the Lord Jesus. Yet it came out in the press years ago, the hateful and spiteful things he said about other people. And that never sat well with me because it contradicts his testimony for the Lord. And so even if flipping through the channels, I see him. There's something that churns within me. And friends, I've got to be honest with you. That's judgmentalism. Because let he who is without sin cast the first stone. It's easy for me to throw stones, even invisible ones, at Dog the Bounty Hunter or other people that we just do not agree with. When we see them, something within us is just very unsettled. It could be politicians. It could be televangelists. But the point is, often the things that we see in other people that we don't like is because those things lie within us. And rather than be honest with ourselves about the darkness within, we treat them unfairly by forming an opinion about them, and yet we don't even know them. We've never spent any time with them to get to know them. And yet we nitpick the splinters in their lives, like in my example with Dog the Bounty Hunter, just a couple of statements he made, and I form an opinion of what this man's life is, a life of over four or five decades, and I form an opinion all around just a couple of statements. And worst of all, that opinion is formed around press releases, which to be honest with you, we can't even trust. And so I'm no different than the Pharisee ready to throw a stone, and yet Jesus is before me reminding me that he who is without sin should cast the first stone. And I have to hang my head in shame, drop the stone, turn and walk away. And you see, that's what this story that Jesus is illustrating here, a story of forgiveness is all about. Because at the core of unforgiveness is judgmentalism. We're not forgiving someone because we have it in our head that we understand the whole story. And oftentimes we don't. And if we would merely sit and talk with that person and see and understand their side of the story, Very often, the relationship is reconciled and forgiveness is offered. Now, the man in our story, he is guilty because he acted upon his lack of forgiveness. He imprisoned the man. And so when the word comes to the king of what he has done, the king becomes very wroth. But I can assure you, friends, we, me, even over the judgment that I placed upon Dog the Bounty Hunter last night watching this television show, we are guiltier than if we had placed them in prison. And the price to pay is much deeper because that unforgiveness resides in our heart. That desire to point out the faults of others resides within our hearts. And it is upon recognition of this that we fall before the Father that we fall before the Lord Jesus and we beg his forgiveness because we know that we are wrong for such attitudes. I know it is hard to forgive sometimes, friends, but we have to be reminded that unforgiveness is a characteristic and a trait of our enemy. 
of Satan, of the devil, the one who wars against our souls. The characteristic that we are to chase after is the characteristic of our Lord Jesus, and that is to show mercy and compassion and forgiveness, just as he has shown mercy, compassion, and forgiveness unto us. And again, that's why Jesus says, judge not, lest you be judged. If you meet others with such lack of compassion, so will I, says Jesus. And that's what we see in verse 34. It says his Lord, the king, was wroth. He was angry with that servant. And so he delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was done unto him. But now hear these severe words of warning in verse 35. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do unto you if you... From your hearts, do not forget everyone, his brother, their trespasses. Forgiveness on the surface may seem to free the other person, but nothing like the freedom that it brings unto us, friends. We are bound in chains of darkness as long as we hold on to these grudges, as long as we refuse to forgive others. But the moment that we let them go, we break those fetters, those chains of bondage. We are free once again to love. You see, it's so easy for us to focus on the big things. And yet it is the little things that cause us the most damage, that threaten the relationship that we have with God, that blinds our eyes and blocks the blessing that he has for us. And so I encourage you today, friend, if there's a relationship that has been severed, if there's a grudge that you're holding, if you find yourself not being able to forgive someone, even if, especially if, you feel like you have done no wrong in the situation, you're wrong because you carry the grudge. You're wrong because you have not forgiven them. And the problem in the Lord's eyes is that you're looking at that person casting all the blame upon them. But God has targeted in on you. He's looking specifically at you. And he expects you to do what is right in his eyes. You're in a personal relationship with him. And what you do isn't based upon anyone else's actions. Everyone else and everything else is excluded. Your relationship is with him, and he demands the best you have to offer. So if you're in a position today where you have been carrying this burden for weeks, months, years, decades, let today be your day of freedom, friend. Let it go. Forgive the person, as we are told in verse 35. Forgive them from your heart. And if you do that, you've done what is required of you in your relationship with God. But if you've truly forgiven them from your heart, the next time you see them, that forgiveness, that love will be manifested. It will be recognized. And your relationship with them will be different from that that it was before. You know, those things that we consider the big things Sometimes they're the easiest to give up. It's these little things, the ones that are hidden and most often unobserved. These are the things that destroy us and are the hardest to overcome. Let us end today by reminding ourselves not to place our focus upon others, but to look deep within ourselves because there is still much within us that the Lord would not find pleasing. And that should bring us to a place of humility as we finally recognize it is not everyone else who is the problem. It is us, friends. We are the problem. Well, I trust you've been blessed today, friends, through this study. I trust that you've been challenged. I trust that the light of God's word has shone through your heart and reveal things to you that may have been long forgotten, but still need to be reconciled. And I trust that you'll be faithful with what the Lord is speaking to you in this moment, and that you'll let nothing in this life interfere 
or cause disruption as you seek to follow him and become a better disciple day by day. Well, I love you, friends. Now, as Yahweh wills, and until next time, I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.